Hi, my name is Ophir. Uh, we have a very interesting presentation, but before we start, I want to get to know you a bit better, uh, understand exactly who are, who, who's in the room. Uh, so who here is for in the affiliate summit for the first time? Raise your hand. By the way, I'm also here for the first time. That's why I'm raising my hand. Uh, I've been affiliate for a long time, but never been to affiliate summit. Um, who here has been in affiliate marketing for under a year, under one year? Okay, between one and three years? Over three years? Okay, cool. So very diverse audience. And I want to do something with you to get to raise a bit up uh, the energy level. Um, any of you here know of Tony Robbins, I assume? Yeah. Everybody knows, anybody here knows what a woke lap is? Yeah. Okay, so stand up for a second. It's going to sound a bit strange in the beginning, but bear with me, it's going to be a lot of fun in the end. So here's what's going to happen. We're going to start, I'm going to explain first, don't do anything, and then we'll do it together. We're going to start clapping, and we clap in an in a increasing levels. And each time we clap, we say the word yes. So it's going like, yes, 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 and faster and faster. Until you can't go any faster, and then what you do, you go, whoa, yes, one more time. Okay, so it sounds stupid. I'll ask you again in 30 seconds after we finish, you'll see how, uh, the effect it does on the energy on the room. So everybody's ready? Put your hands like this, and we're starting. Yes. Yes, yes, say yes, 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 Okay, thank you very much. Have a seat. Now we can start. So, and you see it, it has, it brings a different energy to the room. And when you, you, education is much better when you're in a, like Tony Robbins says, like you're in, when you're in a peak state, you, you tend to, to get information much more easier. So this is the topic of the presentation. Basically, I, have, I own a website called 99 Bitcoins. I'll talk a bit about it later on. Um, and I built it with, uh, uh, over the course of four years and was 80 bucks using something called lean methodology. Anybody here learned uh, what is lean methodology, knows what it is? It's a concept taken from the startup world. I'll talk about it in a second. Basically, here's what you're going to learn in this presentation. First of all, what is lean methodology and how to use it? the power of focus when you're working as an affiliate. And the last thing is how to find your X factor, which is, in my opinion, one of the most overlooked aspects of people when they come to find their affiliate niche. So this is the website. You can see it's pretty big today. This is the Alexa ranking. It's now down to 10,000. It has 1.2 million uniques a month. Um, this is some SEO metrics. Whoever here does SEO knows what it is. So it's a, a pretty large website. But the thing is, it's not to, to, to impress you, but I just want to kind of convey the feeling that this website was done with only 80 bucks out of my own pocket and something that you can do as well and hopefully take the story of what I'm going to say today about this website and try to think how you can copy and paste it into your niche because it's some very basic uh, um, principles that you can do. So how did I even get, first of all, who here knows what Bitcoin is? Okay, anybody here uh, didn't hear about the word Bitcoin just so I'll know kind of like, because uh, Bitcoin is all around the media, especially in the last two months. I'm not going to go into what it is because that's a whole different uh, presentation. But it's basically a, a digital currency. And the way I got acquainted with Bitcoin initially was 2013, April 2013. I was reading this article on TechCrunch talking about Bitcoin becoming a billion dollar industry. And I was out of the job at that time. I just closed down uh, one failed startup and I was thinking what to do with my life. And I had this very uh, um, vast background in, in affiliate marketing and I said, okay, maybe there's some way I can build an affiliate website on Bitcoin. Now, this is the Bitcoin price graph. This is April 2013. As you can see, the, the price just spiked. That's why TechCrunch wrote about it. Uh, because every time that the price goes up, the media gets more interested, and that's how I got, got uh, involved with it. So this, uh, I said, okay, maybe there's some money to, uh, to be made here. But I've kind of learned from my mistakes from my previous failed startup, and I said, I'm not just going to run away and, uh, uh, and start my own business. I want to go through some specific methodology to make sure that I'm going to set up an actual vi viable business that's going to make me money. So lean methodology was something invented around 2010 by a guy, a guy called Eric Ries. There's a whole book called Lean Methodology, but I'm going to give you like the crash course in lean methodology for this presentation. Basically, it means before you start doing anything, you make assumptions about your business and you try to prove them as lazy as possible because you don't like working. And only after you've proved them do you actually get to work. Now, what are these assumptions that you need to, to make about your business? 
it varies from business to business, but at least the way I see it, there are, some, there are three basic assumptions you have to have in any business. First of all, is, is there a big enough need? And that's any business. You have to find a big enough niche so you can make money out of it. What's the second assumption? Any ideas? Sh shout it out. Feel free. Competition. Competition is actually the third. I'll, I'll get it in a second. What's the se uh, any other ideas? Will people pay? OK, can you monetize this? That's the second assumption. And the third thing, so uh, someone shout out your competition. I don't consider, com I, I, I call it in a different way. I call it, what's your X factor? Because if you have any of these two, but not all three of them, you're a bit screwed. Because you can, you can have a big enough need, and you can monetize it, but it's going to be really hard to compete. Give me an example of a niche for, that was a big enough need, people will pay for it, but it's really hard to, uh, to to, I don't know, to kind of position yourself in that need? Weight loss. Sorry? Weight loss. Weight loss. OK, fitness, for example. You can have a big enough need and an X factor, but no way to monetize it. For example, I don't know, you want to um, uh, feed hungry kids around the world. So that's a, a, a really big need. You might have an X factor, but, but there uh, might be some issue to monetize it. So you usually have to have all three of them. So now what I'm going to do is show you how I prove these assumptions, which you can basically do to your um, uh, niches as well. And, and hopefully kind of grow your business. So is there a big enough need? How do I prove that there's a big enough need in a lazy way without getting out of my chair? Any ideas? OK, research. What, what tools do I have to, to find out if there's a big enough need? Sorry, I don't hear. OK, Keyword Planner. I go into the Keyword Planner. I don't know. I assume that most of you here are familiar with it. It's a pretty basic tool of Google to show you how many searches that there are. Another thing I usually do is I see if Google auto-completes kind of like uh, phrases inside this term. So the need that I had when I started out my website was, how do I buy Bitcoin with PayPal? Because I, I, I read about Bitcoin, and I said, OK, let's buy this. And I went to buy it online with PayPal, and I thought, nobody's selling Bitcoin with PayPal. And there was, there's a reason for that. I won't go into that uh, just now. But I said, OK, if, if I can't find it, it's really hard to find. And in the end, I found like some very weird way of through some third-party website that you can buy it. But if I had this need, maybe other people have this need. So I went on, and I did some, some basic research. I put the keyword uh, into the keyword tool, basically, keyword planner. I wrote buy Bitcoin with PayPal. It had 1,600 monthly searches. By the way, as a rule of thumb, this is just me. Anything with above 1,000 searches a month is, is a viable uh, uh, need in, in my book. I just made it up. You can make up whatever number you want, but that's kind of, from my experience, that's how I take it. Another thing is I, I tried to see what Google auto-complete. So I, I wrote how to, to buy Bitcoin, and the second result was with PayPal. So it's kind of like Google validated the fact that there was a big enough need here, because a lot of people are actually looking for this. This is pretty simple. I'm assuming most of you do, have done this in your uh, specific niches. So I can safely assume that, OK, I've got the first step. I've proven a need. Now I need to see, can I monetize this? So what would be a very lazy way to see if I can monetize this, uh, uh, this need. Assuming I found an affiliate program that actually pays, like I said, I found out like, this, this website that actually sells Bitcoin to PayPal, and I have this affiliate program, how can I see if I can monetize this in a lazy way? Give me some examples. What would you do? What, what, what do you mean? Offer the affiliate, uh, the affiliate uh, so what, what would you do, like pr practical stuff? OK, so you can put up an ad, which was pretty um, a bit of an issue for me at the time, because Google doesn't like direct linking of, of affiliates like you know. They won't approve that. What I did was something very simple. I wrote something called a Facebook note. OK, a Facebook note is just like uh, you have this option in your profile. It's like you can blog on Facebook. This is what I wrote. This is the actual note. OK, it's for my profile. I still have it, by the way, until today. Buying it was pay PayPal or a credit card. Credit card was also an issue, by the way. So I wrote this note. Very simple with the affiliate links. You see, Vivox is the affiliate pro, is the affiliate website that I'm actually getting commission from. And then I went down and I did the, the, the following thing. It took me about 15 minutes to write the Facebook note. I posted it in two different Facebook groups, which are focused on Bitcoin. I didn't just go and post it on my profile because it's not targeted audience. I went to two groups that had around maybe 800 people at the time combined. It was a really small niche uh, in 2013, and I put it there, and I saw the following things. After four hours, I got three conversions. Now, if you know it, on some Facebook groups, sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. You can see seen by, how many people saw your actual posting. So after four hours, I saw 40 people saw my post, and three people converted. So if you do the math, 
it means that I have at least 10 conversion, uh, 10 percent conversion. Why? Because even if all 40 people of these clicked and all, and, and three people converted, I'm still around the 10 conversion, uh, the 10 percent conversion, maybe a bit less. But this is just people who saw the post. It's not even people who clicked. I'm assuming that if 40 people saw the post, maybe half of them clicked. I don't know, maybe even less clicked. So the conversion is the mini a minimum of 10 percent. Now, as a benchmark, when I'm looking to sell something online, I'm looking for 2%. 10% is off the charts. There is an issue here. I know that the sample size is very, very small. Only 40 people saw it. So you can say, OK, it's not statistically relevant because it's only 40 people. But for those of you who study statistics, you know there's, I don't know how you say it in English, there's a, a, statistic, a statistical rule. But basically, whenever you have a sample size of more than 30, you're more or less kind of like averaging it out. So anything more than 30 is good. Of course, I'd prefer to have 400 people see it, or 4,000, and then get more accurate statistics. But for me at that time, this was a lazy way to kind of prove, OK, I can move to the next step. Because that's all I'm trying to do, kind of prove my assumptions. The last thing, which was the most hard thing to kind of think of, is do I have an x factor? So, and this is the part where I really want you to think where you can implement this in your, in your niche. So my x factor back at the time was that it was a really young niche. There were no marketers. I had what's called the first marketer advantage. I looked, I Googled up how to buy Bitcoin with PayPal. No one was doing this online. Also, it was a mainly a developer niche, meaning most people were using websites who were really hard to understand, really technical, very difficult jargon. So I said, OK, I'll, I'll go into kind of like the angle of, of explaining things more simply. But the most important thing, in my opinion, which you can do uh, um, basically any, any time, just copy this, you find a young industry that hasn't crossed the chasm. Now, what, what, what does that mean? In, in startup theory, it means that any new technology that comes to life has this uh, life cycle. Basically, in the beginning, it's adopted by innovators, which is 2.5% of the population. After that, it comes into early adopters, which is people who are a bit more inclined to adopt new technology. Then you have the early majority, late majority, and laggards. For example, the laggards today are people who still don't have a smartphone. Okay, or still using, I don't know, like these old Nokia phones or something like that because they don't want to change the technology. Basically, they're almost, uh, uh, you, you have to adopt that technology. The thing is, between early adopters and early majority, there's always some sort of a chasm that you have to, to kind of go through, and it's really hard to do that. But if you find a technology that's probably going to uh, cross this gap, you're basically riding the wave of the technology itself. So give me some examples of technologies today that are probably around this stage of the early adopters that aren't still uh, um, kind of like uh, world widely adopted. Any ideas? Electric cars. OK, electric cars. Yeah. Virtual reality. Internet of things, OK. Drones. That's kind of like the way to, to think what technologies today, because in each of these technologies, you'll probably have a first, a first marker advantage. At, at least as an affiliate, because people don't think that they're big enough yet. But you're not looking at where you are now. You're looking at like, where the puck is going. Okay? So that's, that's the way to think. And that's how you, you can create an x factor if you, even if you don't have one. So you're thinking about, OK, what niche can I, can I create? Think about it from this angle. In 2009, I did, I did the same thing with Kindle ebook readers. The Kindle 2 just came out, and Kindles or ebook readers weren't very common back then. I said, OK, this is how I think it's going to go. And the same thing happened. So that basically proved my first assumption. Now, I guess I actually have to go and get to work. Um, OK, so first of all, I create something called an MVP. An MVP stands for Minimal Viable Product. Again, I want to be as lazy as possible just to try to prove my assumptions. So I put up a one-page website. I just turned like my Facebook uh, uh, note into a website and put up this video and put up my, my affiliate links here. Basically, how I broke it down, I, I bought a really spammy domain name. I'm targeting people who want to buy Bitcoin with PayPal, so I bought bitcoinwithpaypal.com. That was how the website was called initially, okay, just to try to get on Google uh, as, as fast as possible. I had a hosting provider, so I just used the same one I already had. I used a, an old WordPress template. I'm not care, I don't care about making it nice. I'm, I care about getting it done. That's kind of like the main thing you have to get, to get, uh, uh, to get from this presentation. I created a free, a, free, uh, uh, a YouTube tutorial with free software named Jing, which is screen capture. And I got some $50 uh, spent on Upwork. Back at the time, it was Elance for people to, to write me some content and make the site a bit, a bit wider. And the last thing, which actually came back to haunt me later on in my life, I did some bad SEO practices on Fiverr. I bought some really bad links 
just to get uh, the site uh, uh, faster to Google. In the end, this was a mistake. I would, probably could have dropped this, this, last, uh, this last one. This is what you need to remember. Done is better than perfect. Okay? Don't think about, ah, yeah, but it's, I don't have the, the right skills to write the marketing copy, or I'm not sure if, if, if the design is, is correct. Get something out there to get some results and to prove or disprove your assumptions. If you prove them, good, go ahead. If you disprove them, pivot into something else. And this is what happened. So this is how the website grew through April 2013 up to October 2013. Basically, this is the revenue that the site made each month. The first month it made around 70 bucks, next month 140, and so on and so forth. Each month I would take 100% of the revenue and just reinvest it, mainly in SEO stuff, because that was my angle back then. So I would write more content, I would build more, more bad links, at least initially. Uh, today I'm not doing that anymore. Um, but I was focusing on what already works. Why? Because I've put in the work to prove these assumptions. So I'm not just going to go and now maybe try another keyword or something like that. And here's an example of how I focus on what already works. I know this works, right? Because I see it's bringing in money. So instead of going into something else, I just translate it into different languages. Since if it works in English, it'll probably work in German and in, uh, Italian and Portuguese, whatever. So I, I by the way, you can see I, I did a, a big uh, design change here for the site uh, at this point. Again, I'm working only with free stuff templates from, uh, you know, free WordPress templates, getting people to design stuff from Fiverr. I don't care if it's ugly right now because I'm just trying to grow the website. So focusing, I translate stuff on Fiverr. I did kind of like, I did language specific sidebar. It's not that relevant, but you know, if the, if the, the text was in German, I, I made sure that the whole site was in German. And I try to think, okay, so I'm fulfilling a need here and I want to focus on what already works. Maybe I can sell other products that fill the same need. What need am I filling here? What need do people have when they come to buy Bitcoin, at least at 2013? Okay, investing. Basically, they want to make money. That's why people came to Bitcoin initially. So I can start maybe trying to cross-promote products for, uh, for other stuff that maybe, you know, uh, investing products or something like that for people who want, who want to make money. And again, this is how I'm thinking all the time. Just put stuff out there and test it. There's a really good uh, sentence. I think it was uh, coined by... Uh, someone from Facebook, I don't know, it says, fuck it, ship it. That's how you need to think, okay? Fuck it, ship it. I don't care that it looks like, like crap. Put it out there. You need to be embarrassed. About it. And th that's the same way I work today, by the way, with a site that has uh, 15, uh, one, sorry, 1 1.2 million unique visitors each month. If I want to test something new out, I just put something that looks okay. Let's just get some feedback, one or two days of feedback. If it's good, I'll, I'll design it to be nice. If it's not good, I'll just scrap it and move on. And then, this basically happened. So I started out here, okay? Up until this, so the site grew here, it was making around $1,000 uh, of revenue. And I'm still, you know, reinvesting that inside a site. Then in November 2013, this is the price of Bitcoin, it basically uh, peaked up to uh, 1200 yeah, $1,200 uh, dollars per Bitcoin. And, and that's basically the end of the story. From there, I don't have I, I changed the domain name from there, so kind of like uh, um, the analytics didn't, didn't live through. By the way, if you have any domain name with PayPal in it, then PayPal will send you an email from the lawyer, just so you'll know, okay? So after I got Bitcoin uh, with PayPal.com, like two months afterwards, here's another example of how done is better than perfect. Two months after I bought the, the Bitcoin with PayPal uh, domain, PayPal sent me an email. We noticed you, you have uh, this domain with PayPal in, uh, in it. It's not allowed because it's an infringement of a trademark. We request you, rem you don't renew the domain name. Or do you remove it or not, don't, don't renew it. And at the beginning, I, at the time, it was pretty small. So I said, okay, they didn't say that I can't continue using it. They just said they don't want you to renew it. So I have like a whole like eight or, or 10 months still that I can continue using it because I don't care about, you know, making the perfect business right now. Right now, I'm just trying to make it step by step, validating my assumptions and growing the business. So at the end of 2014, here, I changed the 99 bitcoins because I had to. Because, and actually, it was pretty good because as a branding step, you don't want to have a site called bitcoinwithpaypal.com. Um, and from there, basically, so the revenue for November was $16,000 and December was $17,000. And then as the price dropped down, it went down to around $12,000 and, and stayed there basically for the rest of the year. So just imagine from $1,000 going up like in a, in a golf stick uh, curve, um, hockey stick curve, sorry, 
to, to $70,000. Sum it up. Make your assumptions. Remember, three assumptions you have to make, which is, is there a big enough need? Can I monetize it? And what's my X factor? My important, uh, the X factor is, is one, of the more important, uh, one of the more important assumptions you have to find. By the way, you don't have to have an X factor the way I showed it, which is the, like finding a young industry that hasn't crossed the chasm. You could have your own X factor. Maybe you're a domain expert in something, whatever that is. But have an X factor. And focus on what you've already proven. I can't tell you how much time I spent today in saying no to people. People come, I have this great idea, for, and I just, I, I just push them away because I'm focusing on what I know that works right now, and I'm expanding that. When I run out of ideas of what already works, maybe then I'll move to something else. But focus is one of the most important things uh, you can learn. And what's the most important takeaway from this presentation? Done is better than perfect, OK? That's, if you remember one thing, just remember this. Any questions? Yes? I need, to, I need you to speak a bit louder. OK, so the site is, today is monetized through two main uh, revenue streams. One is affiliate programs. So basically, I send people, I write, the site is a, is a blog. You just go on 99bitcoins.com. It explains you what Bitcoin is, how to buy Bitcoin, stuff like that, what's a Bitcoin wallet. And I just, I, I move people into, you know, like Bitcoin exchanges that sell them Bitcoin, and I get a commission out of that. And now that the site has become bigger, the second uh, revenue stream that was added lately is, is selling ads on the site, which I only started out like maybe a year ago. Selling ads on the site, because there's a lot, enough traffic to actually sell the ads. Any other questions? Yeah. Are you buying any traffic? Did I buy traffic? So, so I think around 75% of my traffic is SEO. What I do today is I do buy traffic, but it's for branding purposes and not for, uh, uh, for direct response purposes, so to speak. Why? Because the affiliate marketing world inside Bitcoin is pretty underdeveloped. So there's no, people don't know, I don't know who here knows or, or don't know what I'm going to say. It's a bit, not a lot more technical, but, but a bit more technical. They don't know what is to, you know, to implement a conversion pixel or give you like, you know, exact tracking. So it will be basically throwing money away. So what I do, I still throw money away, but I do it on a branding, on a branding uh, purpose. I do something called DSA. DSA is dynamic search ads in AdWords. It's something that not a lot of people use, and it's really good for branding. It basically means that if your site is showing up on any page on Google for the query, for example, let's say somebody is looking for Bitcoin price predictions 2020. And if my site shows up on the organic search on any page, could be page 40, it will try to, to compete for, for that ad. So what I'm doing is I'm putting up one cent per click ads on this campaign. And basically, I'm capturing a lot of unused inventory people don't, on, on stuff that people don't even, uh, even uh, try to compete. I'm not sure if that makes sense to any of you. But if you want uh, a, a, a deeper drill down later on, come and talk to me and I'll explain exactly these tactics. So to answer your question, yes, I am buying traffic. No, it's not what's uh, bringing me revenue. The revenue mo mo uh, mostly comes from SEO still today. Yeah. Is that PPC you're talking Yeah, about? PPC. Okay. So basically, it's AdWords, Facebook. I tried a bit, I, I try messing around a bit with Twitter and YouTube uh, in the last few days, but m mostly AdWords and Facebook. Uh, do you have a team to help you with this site? And so, at what point did you start acquiring? Okay, this great question. He asked, did I have a team and at what point did I acquire it? I work purely with freelancers. I have seven people on, on my team, which is one developer, one uh, customer support, one, uh, two people who actually create videos, and two or three writers, depending on you know, uh, what you want. It's the same way. I go as lean as possible. I bring in people only when I need them. So at the beginning, I wrote all the content. Then I saw, OK, I, don't have, I have enough revenue, and I don't have enough time. Uh, I'm actually a pretty lazy person. I work like three, four hours a day as, as as, but as a rule, not like you know, not because I'm lazy, because I think you have to focus, you have to be efficient as possible. So, in order to be able to work only three or four hours a day and still manage this really big website, I bring in people only when I, I see that I need them. A lot of people you know bring in. There's something like very um, from an ego point of view that yeah, I'll bring in a team, I'll create a big team. I try to avoid. I try to bring people aboard only when I see there's an actual need for them. So uh, I I. The writers on my site are only per, per project. I have something that I need written, and I don't have time for it. I take, I have like, but there are specific people that I chose from Upwork and from Fiverr. Let me just check the time here. OK, we have five more uh, minutes. Any other questions? 99bitcoins.com.
Yeah, but it's not. It's four things they do. But you know, some I have like three writers and and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the question is, am I still keeping uh, uh, the Bitcoin with PayPal? Yeah. You can go right now and click on buy. Go to Google, <laughs> search buy Bitcoin with PayPal. It'll actually help my search results. Uh, search for buy Bitcoin with PayPal. You'll see that I'm still on, on the number one spot for that. So what I did after I, I said, okay, I'm on the number one spot here. There's nowhere to move up. I said, now let's move to other phrases. And again. I said, okay, let's see there's a big enough need, for example, for the phrase, I don't know, um, um, the best Bitcoin exchange. So then I, I ch check that. And of course, it's easy to know that you can monetize that because you just find an affiliate program for an exchange. And now my X factor at this point was that I'm a thought leader because I'm all people know the site and the site is going to be very big. So kind of like my X factor now changed because this was after I like, was like one year into the game or stuff like that. So again, you, your X factor might change from time to time. You can start, you know, as, uh, as you know, trying to attack a new industry, and then after you're, uh, when you're in the game, you're already kind of like a thought leader. So I mean, like, you still keep the domain the name, or is it, you're supposed to give it up because PayPal. Ah, okay. So, <laughs> that was my question. so I didn't. I answered a whole completely uh, different question. But the question was, do I still keep the Bitcoin with PayPal.com domain name? No, I couldn't because. I just didn't renew it, like they asked. I didn't want to go fight with PayPal now, a legal, a legal uh, thing. So I said, okay, I'll leave the domain. I'll move to another one. Yeah. Yeah, you. The uh, translating that you were talking about yeah. in different languages, I, I might have tuned out for a second when you said that. Yeah. But the, are you still doing that? Only on specific posts that I think are money posts. So only where I see, okay, this post is bringing in a lot of traffic, and maybe I can bring in more traffic, have a transit. So I just I cherry pick specific posts and I translate them. Are they good translation? In the beginning, they were crap. Okay, that's why because done is better than perfect. I didn't care about that. But after I grew, then I, I started taking actual you know like really good because I, now I have the money to do it. Really good translators. Into as many like ten languages. No, or? no. I, I try to pick the the ones that are like the more the most relevant, which is usually you know like um, uh, ch uh, Chinese, German that maybe have like our are uh, high quality traffic and, and have also a lot of volume as well. Yeah. Are you invested in Bitcoin heavily? Okay, so the question is, hey, am I invested in Bitcoin? Uh, yes, I really believe in Bitcoin, um, but that's, yeah, like I said, it's a whole different uh, presentation. Um, I will tell you this uh, as a side note, not relevant to, in, to internet marketing, but to Bitcoin. Don't invest in what you don't understand. I'm, I have this site for four years. I started investing my own money in Bitcoin only a year ago when Bitcoin was like six or 700. I could have started when it was 100, but I didn't. Why? Because I said, I know internet marketing. I don't know Bitcoin. I know how to monetize the internet marketing. If you want to invest in, in, in Bitcoin, take the week, uh, week or two to understand exactly what it is, why it is important, and, and follow it from there. If you want, by the way, on my site, there's a, a really good seven-day crash course that kind of lays out the whole foundations of what Bitcoin is. And then you can see actually also how the Fiverr people do the videos, stuff like that. Okay, so, that, so, so ask, ask me that later on because then we're, we're moving on to a different topic uh, about cryptocurrencies. Uh, any more questions? We have time for one more. Yeah. How did you cross-sell other products? Through email or how? Okay, how did I cross-sell? Well, well, maybe I, the, the, termin, the terminology was wrong. When I mean cross-sell, I just mean try to offer more products uh, on that page which are for the same need. So I just put up, uh, other than, for example, uh, other than just explaining how to buy Bitcoin, I said, by the way, if you want to learn how to invest in this and this, you can go here. So, so that's basically it. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it. See you later.